Hello everyone and welcome back to season two of the Inspire series. It's week three and today I am privileged to be joined once again with an expert panel of children's authors from across the globe where we will explore the magic and power of storytelling that lies within mid-grade readers. Hello Sarah, Michelle, Karen, Josh and Holly. Um, mid-grade readers books um, can be controversial, but they cater for the age to 12, 8 to 12 age group and often deal with themes of self-discovery, friendship and adventure. They're the next step up from what we talked about last week, the early reader. Um, they're often diverse and, yeah, they have some unique characteristics that, you know, I've, I've personally come across. Um, and quite often within the books, the, the main, the characters um, are relatable to that 8 to 12 reading age group. Um, and I'm guessing at the end I'm going to ask, like I did last week, if you can recommend any really great readers for anyone who's out there listening and um, would like to know more about them. So um, welcome. And, Sarah, if I can start with you, because we were just having a discussion before about yeah. Uh, mid-grade readers yeah there's um so obviously last episode we were talking about the early reader chapter books and then we kind of move on to these middle grades we would say middle grade um the mid-grade books and there's there is a confusion and I was just kind of saying to you that actually I've I've I can kind of see where that confusion comes from because um publishers um of a very kind of stance on it being a middle grade book this, these are our early reader chapter books and these are our middle grade books which happen to have chapters um but then when the books go into the bookstores and into the libraries the middle grades are put in with the chapter books in with the early reader chapter books and the chapter books and it all kind of becomes one so there is there is a confusion so if if you are confused about the difference you are not alone there is a difference um and I know everyone's gonna gonna um sort of help everybody to understand I think um because I think as parents or adults or teachers it's it's really interesting to know the difference to encourage the child to kind of move along from the early reader chapter books up to middle grade and as you said Jen um obviously one of the main things is th is the age range so it, you you kind of move up a little bit eight to twelve um so instantly I'll just start off by saying in that middle grade book you're going to find your main protagonist who's going to drive that story along is going to be about 11 12 years old which for us in the UK is the year where children leave primary and head up to high school secondary school so obviously that's when all the different more complex issues come in so they really are there at that kind of you know that they're just on the edge they're just coming out of primary and they're going to have that world opened up so middle grades are really good for them to start to work through these more complex themes within books yeah absolutely Michelle you've written mid-grade readers yeah yes. what's your take on it I think um, one of the big uh, differences when we look at early readers, chapter books and middle grade is that with the target audience where um, we are accessing different themes, uh, making sure they're still age appropriate at each at each um at each level but I think what differentiates the middle grade is we're really starting to get into some of those themes um, around bullying and diversity and inclusion and all of those things so we're, we're really stepping away from the fun even though some of them are still fun but there's there's an opportunity there uh, to really look at the types of issues that are affecting children who are the readership, uh, which is really exciting. Like, I love that. I love that about middle grade. So my middle grade, the Bush Ranger's daughter, 
is classed as an early middle grade reader. It's a historical fiction and it has a protagonist in there who is a girl who is uh, 12 turning 13 at the beginning of the story. And being a historical fiction, it's dealing with a lot of different themes around family, around identity, with the historical aspect of it. It's about um, finding your place in the world, uh, about a lot of cultural stuff that was happening at the time. So I think it's not just a reading level step up, it's a, are they ready to step up to the mature themes? And it's totally okay if kids stay on chapter books for as long as they want. And that's when I think not parents and libraries as gatekeepers, but maybe as as somebody who almost can protect them a little bit if you have a kid who you know is not ready to read those really adult themes then I think there is some level of responsibility to make sure that you're not pushing them to those bigger thicker books with the adult themes if they're not ready yeah yeah exactly yeah Karen you've taught in a lot of the Indigenous communities um did you have a lot to do with mid-grade readers more um when um I was teaching year six, we would have after lunch you'd come in and you would I would read to them. So they would lie on the floor, we'd have this carpet area with their pillows yeah. and things, and we would just I'll just read to them for 20 minutes. And um I think it was like Bridge to Terabithia, Jody's Journey, um There was one about the Silver Sword, I think, Um, and then there was all the Royal Dahl um, because they go junior but then they can move into middle. And then um, I guess you would call Harry Potter. I didn't read Harry Potter to them, um, but I saw it change a child's life a lot Um, and it was really wonderful to see. Um, I would call Harry Potter middle grade, would you? That's one of the questions that I had and that that I was actually going to um, pose to you guys and now you've mentioned it, Karen. I was uh, reading today that Charlotte's Web, Mm -hmm. that everyone knows Charlotte's Web, beautiful kid story, and Harry Potter equally are mid-grade readers. Oh. Um, I can see that for Charlotte's Web. I read that at one source and then I thought, hmm, I, I kind of thought it's a bit, I wasn't too sure how I felt about that. So I kept looking it up and everything I was reading confirmed that that both are mid-grade. Sorry, Josh, you were going to say something? No, I was going to say, I can imagine Charlotte's Web would be middle grade. Yeah. Even though yeah. it's got some some deep themes in it, but I can, I can, it's always been targeted as a, I can imagine an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old girl reading Charlotte's Web. That's yeah. that's how I see it, and yeah. um, and I think Harry Potter has sort of taken that that sort of that mantle because you've got kids at eight, nine, seven, even that are reading to that level. Whether yeah. they can take the concepts on or not is what you know. It's like I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. What yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Holly? Charlotte's Web, Harry Potter. You know, I guess when I think about it, I wonder if as they are read it at different ages, if they wouldn't pick up different things from it. You know, sometimes mm. it might be a little early, but then maybe they decide to read it again next year and they get, you know, they get some other uh, bits from it. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. yeah I like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, and I think, you know, I, I can immediately see Charlotte's Web as a mid-grade reader. And I guess with the Harry Potter text, you have to think right back to the beginning of Harry Potter, which I don't know that a lot of people do these days and because it's such a, a big world on its own, um, it's such a big enterprise, it's hard to think back to the, the first early days of Harry Potter. And I'm just wondering with, with a little bit of research that I did today, is that what's being referred to as the mid-grade reader? And as the series I, developed, yeah. it went from mid-grade to young adult? Yeah. I don't know. My, my mm-hmm. eldest girls, they've all 
really been into Harry Potter and they're a lot older now and then I've got like my seven-year-old who's really intrigued by Harry Potter and I absolutely agree because we'll she'll watch the first one with the older girls but then even they say no don't watch the next ones because it, it and I think that's the thing with middle grade um and I think Michelle touched on it earlier like there's there's the lower end middle grade there's like the younger middle grade that that there is this variant so i I can definitely see Harry Potter in middle grade because what's the alternative? Young adult. Well, it's 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 not young adult. So it is middle grade. It's just kind of the upper end. And I think the the um, early day Harry Potters are definitely middle grade. There was a shift and things have changed, but don't forget Harry's grown and he's gotten older. Yeah. So, yeah. so has the readership. So they've kind of followed through. So, you know, the the nine-year-olds that started out with the first book they've grown with Harry and now they're reading that top end so I think as Michelle said you know we've kind of got this responsibility just to kind of be aware and to to actually understand that within middle grade there is this gradient it's not all the same it's it's, it's not all Charlotte's Web but it's not young adults so there, yeah. there there is this area where you've got to be aware of the differences um so yeah because otherwise then obviously we're going in, into young adults which is different yeah all like sweet i was would read charlotte's web to year two but then i would read i didn't read harry potter to them but um like bridge to terabithia would be year six so mm-hmm. that is your variant so i guess it they start, they can start in year two on the middle middle grade and then depending on how they read and then it goes right through, I would say, to year six or year seven in Australia. Yeah. Growing yeah. readers. The readers are growing. So that's why it is a huge important um, area within children's literature because this is the point that the readers are really starting to grow. Like, you know, we said earlier, not just their grammar and the linguistics, their comprehension, their understanding of who they are, the world, where they fit. That's a really key age where it's growing. So, of course, middle grade is going to be like that because they're going to grow with that. Mm -hmm. Middle grade's not as simple as a junior reader. A middle grade will now have subplots and they'll have Mm. deep character development, um, so there's many more layers, like what Holly was saying, and they can take what they want from those layers. But when they're doing it, like they're divided into chapters, so there's 12 chapters and they usually have a title and they can go off into sub-themes too, but then they all feed into the main theme. Like in your book, Michelle, do you be able to explain a little bit about um it's, it's got chapters and mm-hmm. and some of the subplots or something so we can get an idea how yeah absolutely I think um that the other thing that we need to look at too is middle grade as a series and middle grade as single books because they're almost like two different subgenres of of middle grade so mine is going to be part of a series so each uh each book the protagonist gets older and in this book she's 13 um she's moving from New South Wales up to Queensland with her family she's a girl in pioneer Australia she's been told she's not allowed to help on the farm doing any of the boy stuff she's got to wear dresses and that's just not her um but this is a time where girls were really just part of the goods and chattel in in the Australian you know in the Australian currency whereas boys were very valuable but girls really weren't that valuable so it's actually based on my grandmother's family history so a lot of um what it is based on actually really happened they're all based on real people it's real places um and I'm finding that in middle grade kids are really loving the non-fiction element put into stories they they still love their fantasy they still love uh the imagination but more and more they're really loving anything to do with 
that um, age group have a foundation in something that they can research or something that is actually from real life. But then you've got other middle grade, and I guess Judy Bloom was actually the one who actually started a middle grade book, a standalone middle grade book with things like, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. So they, they're the ones, I guess, that uh, were really taking um, away from a series where the protagonist got older and the kids who were reading it got older and it turned from younger chapter book up into middle grade into YA. Um, and an example of that would be like The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. So we start off with the kids being quite young in this and by the end of the series, we've got some of the characters who aren't in it anymore because they're too old. So um, I think there, there's two different levels of of uh, middle grade there and it's, it's really a matter of um, finding books at this age that are still wanting your kid to to read like it, it it really still is that same thing that we were talking about last time find something that's going to hook them and make them want to keep reading whatever yeah. that is yeah yeah josh what's your experience if, if you can remember back to when you were that age well that's all i can rely on because I, I don't read obviously middle grade fiction i, don't, <laughs> I really don't know much about it and there is one book i will mention at the end here yeah, but yeah. i remember as in primary school we yeah. had uh, it was like a like a book club thing that you would sign up and then they would send through a list of books that you could you could buy. They would send back to your parents. They would check yeah. what you want. Getting this book, I must have been in year five, and it was a it was about a boy who who his family moved to a new estate and they weren't allowed pets. No pets in this new estate, and so this kid used to go running around going. Where am I going to, you know, I, I want a pet, I want a dog. And he finds this stray dog. And, of course, he can't bring the stray dog back into the into the, the estate. And he finds an abandoned car and moves into the abandoned car with his dog. And it was like, this is the story. And that one going, okay, it wasn't that deep. There weren't many sub-levels to it or anything like that. But it suited me at that time. And yeah. that's what I had access to in regards to books and stories and stuff like that. So yeah. But I, yeah. I know that the world is so much broader now. There's so many opportunities and so many more books that are, are written to a higher level of intellect and comprehension than what there were back in. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's it's important to, you know, realise and understand that what we read when we were mm. that it, within that age group is vastly different completely to the kids yeah. today and you mm. know it's just the way we have evolved yeah mm. Mm. yeah mm. holly what's your favorite mid-grade reader do you have one you know um i had a couple of the the judy bloom ones i you know and i actually was um was watching a documentary about her and i I found it really fascinating. I didn't realize there were that many books. I, I remembered a couple of them. Um, it's Not the End of the World and Dini. I remember those two. Yeah. But then as they talked in the documentary about, I mean, she had so many. As well, the ones um, during that period in my library, we had a few different series. And I don't know if kids are actually reading these ones anymore. The Hardy Boys. Yes. Uh, Nancy Drew. Yeah. And I found this one and I have never seen it again anywhere other than in my school library, but it was called Vicky Barr. And it was all about a stewardess and it was, but it was a mystery. It was very much like the, the Nancy Drew. So that's what I remember um, really enjoying those ones, you know, and as, and because there was so many, I remember I was trying to hit a, you know, how many hundred books and, and it was so easy. That's the thing that I liked when they had those contests, that when you found something that somebody really liked with my own kids as well, you know, when they found that, that particular series, then they, you know, it was just simple. They just had to get the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the mid-grade readers that that I remember were much like yours, Holly. They were more the adventure stories, 
Um, but I think these days there's so much more cultural diversity, and please correct me if I'm wrong, and <laughs> so much more inclusive than what they used to be. Um, do you find that, Josh? Yeah, I, certainly. I, I was actually going to, the one book that I do know about of a middle grade reader is called A Glass House, Glass House of Stars by Shirley Ma. And she won the Premier's Book Prize last year or the year before. And that was the story about her as a seven-year-old girl growing up as a, as a Chinese girl on Christmas Island and then coming to Australia. And the, and the cultural shock that she had coming from that, coming to Australia and with her sister and stuff like that. And it sort of, it was her personal story written as fiction, but it was done as as an own story. It was her own voice. So therefore yeah. other kids of that background could go, ah, oh, this is me. I relate to that. I connect with that. I'm not alone. And and so so that's where as a middle grade book, that fitted that 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 genre really, really, really well. Yeah. Sarah, over in the UK, do do your mid grade readers cover very much you know that cultural diversity and and inclusivity yeah yeah Yeah. and we're we're finding it so much more at the moment and I think it's you know it's so amazing to see because you know if we're all honest our childhoods shaped us in some way our stories Mm -hmm. back then are kind of what we do and why we do everything now so when these adult writers are writing middle grade they are going back to their 11 year old self and what Mm. shapes them and you know how were they seen or how did they see the world and I think that's really important because that's you know that's their story to tell but it's in turn helping so many more children and I think that we we didn't have it as much when we were growing up you know middle grades were more about adventure and whereas now we're just seeing so much more about um you know these true life stories being told through middle grades but also let's, let's not forget that middle grades can also be factual books as well so yeah. you know it's it's because that audience that age range is the audience so there's, there's also a lot of factual books out there but we are seeing this kind of mix again between fact and fiction um which children you know we really need to give our readers so much more credit because they're 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 lapping up mm-hmm. these stories of you know diversity and, and you know when um people are talking about their struggles when they were a child and they're relating to it they just happen to be within that that age group of middle grade which like I said is they are right on the cusp of going into high school where they're gonna you know that their, their world's going to change again so it's it's really important that we have more of these first person you know these narratives these true voices coming through in middle grade and I think it's definitely happening yeah yeah is that the same in Canada Holly Yes. Um, you know, I think it's such there's such a change and a lot of the a lot of the diversity wasn't um represented. Like I, I definitely don't I, I saw a difference even of course from my childhood to to my own kids and my kids are like um in their twenties sort of thing. And now of course since I've uh become an author I've I have a lot of uh, children's book authors in the group as well. And, you know, I just see so much about diversity and inclusion. I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm really glad to see that. It's so many things, just um, not having as many cultures around me as I grew up. I I could never understand people's uh, perception and and racism and and things like that and I it just wasn't something that I was really exposed to much and I was kind of disappointed in how we took a, a step back around the time of uh, the pandemic in particular you really noticed it and I'm so glad that we're making steps forward yeah, yeah. I think there's been some really great gold nuggets here tonight in, in what we've discussed. Going to wrap it up now just by asking, Sarah, what's your favourite mid-grade reader? 
Um, well, going back to my childhood, it was definitely Judy Bloom. I mean, that definitely yeah. opened. <laughs> She's my favourite. <laughs> yeah, but I have to say, in our house, it is Roald Dahl all the way because, oh, yeah. yeah, all of my children are just, yeah, that's that's their kind of um, yeah. middle grade at the moment. I'm sure it's, it's going to progress. Yes. <laughs> Michelle? Um, mine from my childhood was Wrinkle in Time. Ah, yes, yes. It changed everything. <laughs> just opened my mind I loved it yeah. um a modern one that I could really recommend is the land of stories series by Chris Colfer it's great really great still really good for those younger kids yeah. who want to read a fatter book but maybe aren't 100 percent ready for a lot of the um adult-ish topics yeah Josh um, I'll, I'll just go with what I mentioned before, Glass House of Stars by Shirley. Yeah, Moore. yeah, I thought you might. Yeah. <laughs> Karen? Uh, I would say Bridge to Terabithia. Yeah. And oh, and just on a quick note, um, how you were saying there's more diversity and things in middle grade, I think it's societal change because it's the same in picture books. Yeah. And it's the same in film. Yeah. When you look back to what I watched when I was a kid, so yeah. different. Like I watched the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now, yeah. And it is. It is a societal change, I think, you know, and then globally. Yeah. 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 Holly, your favorite book? Well, I'm going to stick to my Vicky Barr series. <laughs> yeah yeah that's great well thank you once again everyone for sharing your wisdom and knowledge and lots of gold nuggets dropped tonight um and i will speak to you all again next week bye everyone <laughs>